tips and tricks to drawing different types of dog ears. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to start out with the hardest one, which is curly fur. So you want to first start out with drawing the texture, which is basically the um, darkest parts of the curly fur. And for this case here, there's not a lot of darker parts because it is quite a lot of white blonde hair. But I did want to emphasize on the shapes that I'm drawing here for this texture. You can see there's a lot of almond shapes that is kind of how that curly fur comes about is in these waves that create this um, you know almond empty space so think about it like that when you're drawing that kind of texture and then you can start to build up your layers after you've drawn those shapes with a um, mixture of mid-tones and still kind of avoiding the highlights a little bit that way you can darken the rest of it in the darker sections and then come back later and focus on the highlights. So the next part about um, drawing with curly fur is of course the blending of all the colors. So you see the mid-tones and the low lights are being blended together. That's super important to getting the curly fur to look more realistic is there's just a lot of um, texture going on, a lot of depth, a lot of um, really everything that's going on when it comes to curly fur. So paying attention to that and trying to draw more of the shapes that you see overall than each little step in each little um, section that's that's I know I do like to say that a lot is like focus on each section at a time but what I mean by this part is let's say let's focus on the ear so that's a section and in that section there's going to be different shapes happening so using a blend of warm tones and cool tones mostly grays when it comes to um, more blonde fur is what's really going to get you to uh, see that kind of shape. You can also use an electric eraser to create texture and little bits of the stray highlighted pieces of fur. So now you can really see that it does look more like that lively curly fur pattern but then you can also start to burnish some areas and burnishing I always talk about it but it is basically creating a um, a really good waxy coating over what you just drew and it blends everything together very well I love using it for these kind of um, this type of textured fur because there's so much of that smooth texture going on with this curly fur. So using that between the burnishing and then the using the um, electric eraser to do the little highlights and the stray hair just makes it look even more realistic because every single type of hair does have a little bit of stray hairs coming out, um, even if it's very flat hair. So paying attention to that and recreating that using those different techniques will add more realism and more depth to the portrait and especially to the ears here because in curly ears there is quite a lot of stray hairs so that is very important and then when it comes to color there's different types of color in curly fur so this blonde hair here you can see I used a little bit of like this gold tone and then I also used a um, bit of like ivories and warm grays and cool grays in there but you can still see that I left the highlights alone until like the last step really once you have darkened everything else then you can go in and add the um, 
Add what you need into the highlights such as maybe a burnishing process using lighter colors. Ear folds is very interesting because you really wouldn't think that you would need to learn a whole lot about ears, but when it comes to seeing the underside of the ear and then seeing that folding, it's super important that you get the right texture down because there's so much going on underneath that ear. So for instance here, there's only I'm using a very light layer and I'm just really more blending the colors together than creating a texture for this. And I am avoiding certain sections so that I can go back later and add detail as I need. So you can see the split between the um, top of the head and the ear. I left that alone because I'm going to go back afterwards and fill that in. I just want to make sure that my proportions are correct before I fully fill in that area. But now I'm just adding a little bit of texture, which I will blend later on. So if it's not very well textured, that's okay, because you can add the texture afterwards. But in that fold of the ear, you could see kind of the top of the ear as well. That's what I'm drawing at this very second. And I'm just really trying to complete that a little bit more so that I know where that's located. And then going in and darkening the um, features separating the top and the um, that fold, the bottom part of the ear. Uh, it's really important to make sure that you emphasize the folds or it will just look like a jumbled mess. My favorite part about the folded ears is getting to add in different colors. So this one doesn't have a whole lot of pinks, but most ears underneath do have quite a bit of um, different pinks in there so that's really fun to incorporate that but really at this point it's just about building up those layers making sure you're drawing in the same direction as the fur that you see and it may be a little bit difficult to see some of that but if you use other reference images then it'll make it a little bit easier if those images are uh, more detailed so the top part of the ear, we're just going to complete that and using the same methods really. And then I know I, I skipped ahead, but it really is just about building up those layers and using the same methods. And then once you're done, you can use a little bit of um, a lighter color to add some highlights and texture to the fur. And it's just about filling in everything that maybe looks like you might have missed a section or not. But now you can actually see the fold of the ear a little bit better. And, um, you know, if I were to do this ear now currently, because I did this about a year ago, I think I would have kind of emphasized the fold a little bit better by using um, some lighter pinks and also darkening the blacks a little bit more by using uh, mineral spirits to, or mineral oil to um, to blend that layer the first couple layers and then use the black on top which it just darkens the features better learn to draw your own pet this is an eight week program where you get to learn to draw all sorts of different animal fur such as different types of curly fur striped fur different colored fur as well such as brown or black and different animal features as well as towards the end you'll get to follow along a full pet portrait tutorial so at the very end you will get to draw your own pet with confidence sign up today to be put on the wait list Long ears do have the same or similar type of methods as the folded ears, 
you're really just building up the layers as you go but this is a whole lot easier than all the rest of the type of ears this is short fur and it's basically a um you know one direction pointing down ear so your first layer you're going to use a lighter color and you're just getting that texture down well not really the texture per se but i guess more of the color so that as you're building it up you can still see the blend of all the colors together but you still want to draw in the same direction because all of those layers are going to show through no matter what as you're building up the layers so just be mindful of that and make sure that it looks natural to the uh, reference image so as i'm building up this layer I am avoiding some of the highlighted parts that way mentally in my mind I know where those are located proportionately so that as I'm building up all of these darker sections the lighter sections are going to be done last super 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 important if you have tried other methods and you end up having your proportions off it might be because you are not leaving room for the highlights and and that could be a big mistake because it really is like my guideline to understanding proportions and where they're located as I'm in the process of building up these layers so this is just a very generic ear not a lot of color added to it I'm using a mix of warm grays even like a dark brownish gray to build up before I start to use the black color pencil. And so now I'm going to work on the mid-tone, start to build up all of those layers in that mid-tone area and then by the end I'll get to blend it a little bit more. So just follow along at this last little bit and you'll see what I mean here about um, you know getting to blend it all and build 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 up all those layers I know it can be very um, very long and very stressful because patience is what is required for drawing with color pencils so if you can be patient and just work on those layers that's what is really going to help you um, understand proportions better and understand how to use color pencils. And this portrait here is actually about a year and a half old. So what I would have done differently now is I would probably try to smooth out the texture a little bit better, um, emphasize the highlights even more so by um, you know using lighter colors and then also adding a little bit more variety of colors into it I know that this ear does not have a lot of color in general but you'd be surprised how many colors are actually in um, fur all different kinds of fur so this dog definitely had more of um, you know the grayish brown tones but I would have added more warm brown colors in here and emphasized the mid-tones with that brown color and I probably would have emphasized the um, darks a little bit more by using either heavier pressure just straight up black or using the um, you know the Gamsol mineral spirits to um, to blend with that oil to blend a little bit more and then add the black on top because it does darken it so that's probably what I would have done and, but we all learn from our mistakes, right? And so this is one that I wanted to show because this part is really cool here using the slice tool to create some texture and some little bit of stray hairs in there. I definitely didn't have to um, overdo it. And I don't think I really did overdo it too much, but you can accidentally overdo the texture there because you really don't want it to be too scratchy looking. Want it to be a little bit more of a subtle stray hair highlighted uh, effect. So orange is 
very rare I don't get a lot of orange pet portraits but when I do I try to use a variety of colors and it can be very difficult to get the exact coloring down so first layer I'm using a light pale skin tone color and then using a little bit of a um, kind of like a burnt orange color and then the middle of the ear will have a little bit of a pinkish tone to it so you'll see that there but what I just did there is I actually scratched away at the surface to create some white hairs using that um, slice tool you can do that or you can just uh, try to create it with color pencils but either way you're going to come up with the texture so as you're building up the layers using uh, warm browns this is going to show you can see the little stray hairs um, showing up more afterwards now this was also done about a year ago so what I really would have done for this is actually focused more on the um, outer part of the ear first and then worked my way inwards. I probably would have still used the same colors but maybe um, emphasized the detail a little bit more than I did in this portrait. But overall it really is about getting that type of color down right and then getting the texture down right afterwards or in between as well not necessarily afterwards but the texture is very important for different types of ears so for this one it's more straight hairs but it's longer too so there's quite a lot of um, different sections of this ear that just have different colors different um, different directions of the hair too so that's why I wanted to incorporate that white hair using the slice tool first so that I can get that down and um, and then focus on the rest of the details because the white can be very difficult to apply afterwards or even as you are drawing the uh, rest of the details all together So it may seem like it's taking a while to build up these layers and trust me it is it took a long time to build up because i wasn't too sure what kind of colors to use at the time and i just didn't know um you know what direction i wanted to take for this ear but overall i think that it turned out pretty well considering that the um the ear definitely had quite a bunch of tricky colors added to it and now it is about darkening up all the features so I'll use a dark brown I'll even use like a dark sepia to darken up other features and then once all that's done uh, you can actually start to see a little bit more of the um, the depth going on when you've darkened up those features so I really hope that this video was helpful for drawing dog ears. There's all sorts of different types of dog ears, so if you have a request for um, learning one, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Learn to draw miniature color pencil portraits. The best part about drawing these miniature portraits is I can get them done in a very reasonable time without being so intimidated of drawing so large. My students have absolutely loved getting to draw these little portraits because they feel like they can actually get something accomplished within a reasonable amount of time. Each one takes no more than about two to three hours, so you will have an awesome portrait by the end of the day. 
These are beginner friendly and great for ages 12 and up. At the bottom of the video, I give you what pencil I use so that you're never confused and I will tell you every step that needs to be taken. So if you are just wanting to have fun one day and just play around, then you can sign up for the Patreon membership that is only $11 a month and you can cancel at any time. Hi, I'm Lauren Klein. I'm a professional portrait artist who draws everything from pet portraits, people, and wildlife. Join me on my journey as I explore colored pencils. 